Hello, welcome to another Exchange Leicester Square Theatre podcast with Adam Buxton making his third appearance. Very exciting. I'm uh, going to try something a bit different. Uh, in the, I've, I've, tr- I've resisted uh, being sponsored uh, on these podcasts, except by idiots who uh, have paid on the Kickstarter. And this isn't exactly a sponsorship because the people I'm recommending don't know I'm doing this. But I've recently moved house and I've changed energy company to Bulb, who are a renewable energy company. Uh, and they, uh, it's about £200 a year less than I've been paying before. Uh, and loads of their energy is renewable. They're really good, and I rang up their customer services, and they were great, and all the other people I worked with were shit. So I thought I'd recommend Bulb, if you want to change your energy people. Plus, there is uh, some mercenary uh, point to this as well. Uh, if you use the code bulb.co.uk slash refer slash Richard234, when you're signing up, then you'll get a £50 credit, and I'll get a £50 credit, and hopefully I'll never have to pay for energy ever again. Uh, so if you're moving energy anyway, check out. There's loads of comparison sites. Bulb are pretty good. There's loads of other ones. All the big ones are cunts. And uh, also, because they're not actually sponsoring me, if they're shit, I will tell you in another podcast. So it's a perfect win-win situation. Anyway, go to bulb.co.uk slash refer slash Richard234 uh, and you can get £50 and I can get £50 of free energy. I'm just going to leave my fridge open if, I, if lots of people do it. So... It's got to be worth it for that, right? Anyway, let's watch the kind of guy who does this sort of thing all the time. Adam Buxton on Raha Lerstepa, Raha Lerstepa. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Leicester Square Theatre. Please welcome a man who just paid 5p for a twirl, effectively. Yeah. (laughs) Find out how. It's Richard Herring! (laughs) Thank you very much. Welcome. Welcome to another edition of Richard Herring's Leicester Square Theatre podcast. Um, I was at the Virgin Megastore uh, the other day. (laughs) Hanging out, playing that Adam's Family Pinball in the basement um, with some uh, Dutch tourists. And those guys uh, called the Rahalistapa. So I don't know if that's going to catch on. Uh, yeah, so uh, on my way to the theatre this evening, I, uh, I'm trying to give up chocolate. So I uh, stopped off at Sainsbury's and bought a twirl. Uh, it's, you know, it's hard. It's, there's a lot of air in that. <laughs> Barely counts. Uh, so... Um, and uh, it's a uh, bagging area, automatic bagging area, one of those machines in there. And uh, it's 50p for a twirl. Not bad, actually, is it? I was in WX Smiths and paid 96p one for one <laughs> the other day. So don't shop at WX Smiths. That is my advice to you if you're buying twirls. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, I, went, I put my 50p in and I noticed in the little coin rejection thing, 45p. <laughs> Someone else had gone out. And taking the change, the rich herring pocketed that. <laughs> 5p for a twirl, that's how it's done, ladies and gentlemen. Now, but is that, someone got uh, taken to court for um, someone who had been in a cash machine in a shop and dropped 10 pounds and the person picked up the 10 pounds and pocketed the 10 pounds and were taken to court and uh, prosecuted for stealing 10 pounds from that person, which, you know, is a slightly different example. That genuinely happened. But, you know, th- ethically, it's a moral maze, isn't it? Have I done, th- I don't know whose 45p it was, you know, should I really have gone up to them and said there was 45p there in the coin? If someone comes back and says, <laughs> can you hold this for them? And give it to, they basically give 45p to Ian Sainsbury. Who, what would you do? That's the question. What would you do? My, I kept the money. That's what I did in my thought. 5p twirl. I enjoyed my 5p twirl. But I'm going to ask Adam Buxton about that because that's the kind of thing <laughs> that I think, I think he'll have a lot to say about. So will you please, I've given away, given away what's coming up. Uh, will you please, well, giving away the secret of who the guest is. Uh, and I said, when you hear your name, come on, so I'm glad that he didn't. Uh, so will you please, will you please welcome a man? I can't remember how I've introduced him before, what he was best known as before, so I hope it wasn't this. He's probably best known as Louise from Takeover TV. That's why we're here. It's Adam Buxton, ladies and gentlemen. Adam Buxton. Here he comes. Here he is. Welcome, sit down. Thank you so much. Third time guest, Adam, third time guest. You're yeah. the first ever third time guest. Thank you, that. I'm honoured. It's the worst. You were the first ever second time guest as well. Yeah, but you did tell me uh, the last time I saw you yeah. that the only other second time guest, David Mitchell, yeah. was funnier overall. <laughs> 
I think he's uh, almost the, the perfect guest for this podcast. He's more or less the perfect guest for more or less anything. <laughs> he is. <laughs> and because he treats me, you treat me as an equal, uh, he treats me very much as a, a slightly <laughs> intelligent <laughs> five-year-old child. And that is the correct way to do it. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I can't believe, and I was amazed that the last time you were on was uh, three years ago. I know. I just can't believe how quickly those three years... It was a very gone. different world. <laughs> it was. <laughs> it was a simpler time. It was. So that's incredible. I know. And what have I achieved since then? Well, quite, you've done quite, you've done quite. You've got, you got a hat. You didn't have that hat before. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah, yeah, I, it's baseball cap time. Yeah. I've had a few moments recently where I was, aw I, I suddenly saw my head. And um, <laughs> one time was at the Brixton Academy, okay. giving an award to Louis Theroux oh. as part of the NME Awards. And I uh, <laughs> turned around. First of all, I was very nervous about what I was going to say, and I overthought it. That's one of my favorite things to do is overthink I like that about you. a situation. I like to overthink everything. And so I overthought that. And I think I spoke about it on my podcast, but I was going to do my Donald Trump joke around, the, oh, yes. like at the beginning of the year, when everyone, it was award ceremony time, and everyone was going on about, like, we've got to stick together the artistic community and we've got to, you know, uh, stand up to this kind of thing. And I thought it would be funny to go on and say, you know, I think it's very important for us all to stick together and, and just give Donald Trump a chance. Because I, <laughs> I think he's got a lot of good ideas and there's, uh, no one's really listening to what he has to say and being, they're being quite mean about him, so why don't we all... So, you know, if I'd said that with you guys, it would have gone really well, but at the NME Awards, I chickened out. And in the end, I just went for making a joke about how loud it was. I went up there, I said, it's very loud. Uh, when when um, Wiley was playing, my guts were shaking and I thought I was going to do a poo. I mean, because of the bass. And all I could see was um, MIA staring at me and kind of kissing her teeth in a, in a way that I didn't think was positive. <laughs> <laughs> and so then I, I said, all right, well, I, let's, get to the, uh, let's get to the nomination, I said. Right, because I was so flat, you know, I was so like rattled, I, I forgot to say nominations. Right. So I should say, let's take a look at the nomination turn around and for a second before the giant screen yeah. cut to the clip package I just saw the back of my head with a huge bald spot <laughs> and I just thought it's hat time <laughs> and more and more whenever I get the opportunity it's yeah. hat time now yeah, that's fair enough. for a while it was my dad's old cap right. his flat cap so I wore it for sentimental reasons after he died. But then um, I saw a tweet from someone who was saying, why can't we, it was, I can't remember exactly what the wording was, but the implication was stop pretending that you're wearing a flat cap for any other reason than that you're a UKIP voter. Yeah, I was gonna say it's got a nuttle overtone. That's a shame though, isn't it? Is, it? Yeah. I'm not a UKIP voter. <laughs> but you live in Norwich, you must be. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think, didn't Norwich go Labour? I think it did. A I lot of these, I think Norwich also was uh, Remain, because I did, I was, I, w I did a joke in my last tour about wherever I was, I'd say, I'd, I'd say something about how I thought racism was right in the, in the, co in the course of a routine, yeah. and then it'd be a, and I'd go, oh, I thought this would go better post-Brexit. Uh, and Norwich, <laughs> Norwich was one of the places that they went, well, actually, we wrote Remain, I think, so. Yeah, Let's well, I won't do my Trump joke there. No, okay. <laughs> when I did my Trump joke in, in, at the 100 Club, uh, it didn't, it went badly. Yeah. And I just, th there was a guy, there was a period of silence, and then a guy at the back, after I'd said, oh, he's got a lot of good ideas, Trump, the guy just goes, like what? <laughs> <laughs> and at that point, I should have, if I was a better comedian, I would have started reeling off some of his ideas <laughs> and got behind them. <laughs> but I just, I just went, oh, I was joking. <laughs> 
Sometimes that's the only response yeah. to a heckler. I was, I'm sort of doing jokes. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realise how it was. I wasn't being serious. <laughs> I funny, I think very shortly, maybe after that last podcast, I bumped into you in the streets of Norwich. I summoned you up. Yeah, that was because weird. I was, I was walking, I, got, I went out my, I was on tour in Norwich, whatever year that was, and I went out my hotel and I turned, I was trying to find the town centre and I turned the wrong way and I ended up doing a massive loop all around Norwich and went through this sort of weird, really old shopping arcade that looked like it was from the 19th. Anglia Square. That is it. I knew you'd know, and that was, I felt like I'd gone through good night sweethearting. <laughs> Genuinely. <laughs> and uh, it was really bizarre. And then I kind of was looping around, I was sort of looking at the skyline, trying to spot cathedrals and find my way back. And then I was thinking, oh, God, I'm lost. And, I go, and my phone had run out of battery. I couldn't check my phone. It was te terrible. And then suddenly realised how lost you are in the modern world. I thought, oh, I wonder if I'll bump into Adam Buxton while I'm in Norwich. And literally, five seconds later, a car pulls in front of me into this uh, a DIY shop, a car Framers shop. shop. Yeah, Framers shop, that's It's right. where I get all the pictures of myself <laughs> framed. <laughs> and I thought, fucking rude bastard. And then I looked and you went, well, and, and I'd conjured Adam Buxton up. <laughs> And he'd say, he said, yeah, you are heading in the right direction. That I think I was, is. I think I was even thinking of you as well because I maybe I saw a tweet that you were in Norwich or I mm. knew you were doing a show. It was very weird. Yeah. I mean, I suppose that it's not astronomically improbable, but that the timing of it was very odd. But you know, what a waste of a coincidence, really. You know, I was, I was actually, <laughs> a, if you'd appeared like an hour earlier, you could have saved me walking all around yeah. Norwich and said you've gone the wrong way there. And b, you know, if there's someone orchestrating all of this. I mean, that seems a very strange use of their powers. <laughs> yeah, but you don't know. There might be some way that it works out. There yeah. might be a punchline to the whole thing that we're not aware well, of. Well, yet. we'll see. Well, when we, at the yeah. end, maybe we'll find out at the end. The end of everything. Yes. <laughs> or we'll, uh, we'll find out there's no punchline and uh, God will just say, I was just joking. <laughs> <laughs> It could be, but it was a weird thing. But I still can't, I can't believe three. My wife thinks I'm weird because like last week we were in Norwich. I go to, I'm, I'm usually with my wife in Norwich because she's got friends in Norwich. Uh, and uh, I always get there and I, whenever I'm on tour, I only get to a town and then think, oh, I know someone in this town. And then my wife thinks I'm weird because I never then just t tweet you and say, do you want to meet up for a drink? And I think it's too late to tweet you and uh, re meet up for a drink. Who do you think's right? No, you could definitely do it. I'll respond to yeah. let's meet up for a drink tweets. Yeah. I had a uh, drink oh, with you. Matt Holness. Did he? Yeah. And uh, there's a guy called Baker Terry who does these. He, he is one of the people that does Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. Have you right. heard of this? Um, he's just moved to Norwich. I thought, do you find, are you a sociable person? I'm not. I'm no. I, I'm not. So I won't. <laughs> no. so I think women find men strange in that, and that they'll get someone and go, you know someone here, why aren't you ringing them up and talking to them and say, let's meet up? Yeah, no, I, I, I'm delighted. <laughs> the thing is that I, I'm delighted whenever I'm on my own. Yeah. I, I, I stay with a friend, like tonight I'm staying with a friend in London, but he's not there. <laughs> <laughs> and if I, if I knew that he was going to be there tonight, I would have got a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is that, um, and that's not because he's one of my oldest friends, I love him dearly, but it's just that I value, especially when you have a family and there's a lot of people in the house, yeah, yeah. you know, you value that time totally alone and when you're on the road. Like, I wouldn't like to be on the road for weeks and weeks. I don't really tour like that. No. But if I've got a day or two here or there, it's party time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sit on my own and I'm going to watch a lot of Frank Zappa documentaries. <laughs> And I'm not going to have to justify it or argue it. It is with true. Anyone. I mean, like, uh, quite, I don't know if you get this, when I'm on tour, quite a lot of, you know, a fan will say, well, you know, why don't you come and uh, sleep? We've got a spare room. Like, uh, going to the Edinburgh Fringe, often people, we've got a spare room in our yeah. flat. Why don't you come and live in our spare room for the month? You kind of go, well. Didn't you do that once before and it turned out to be a weird shrine? Or am I thinking no, of Alan that's Partridge? Stuart, Stuart, Stuart. Oh, that was Stuart. <laughs> Stuart did it and then that became Alan Partridge. Right. It generally happened to Stuart, basically. But it, 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 and. And the person, it's such an amazing story, but I think I've told it before, but the person, he was a student, he went back to this place, there were posters of, he says himself, but apparently lots of other comedians as well on the wall, there were people watching Animal Farm, the porn version, oh. of, in, the, in the lounge, which was where they said they had a spare room, so he had to lie on this mattress <laughs> while people watched quite hardcore, I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't know if there's any not hardcore animal pornography. <laughs> I suppose where you just see someone 
teasing the tit of a pig or something. I don't know. <laughs> I think all po- animal pornography is fairly... <laughs> that's, that's fairly a, full on. That's a gap in the market you might get. <laughs> I'm going to get to work. <laughs> Stroking. All right, but later I discovered the student that Stuart slept, uh, slept on the floor and invites you back to his flat was Christian O'Connell, the DJ, <laughs> the future DJ. Right. Uh, who, who then defended himself saying there were other, uh, there wasn't just, but that, yeah. that wasn't just Stuart Lee posters, but that was the impetus that Peter Bainham then took and put that into Alan Partridge. There you go. So, and Stu wrote a film and a book about, and a routine about the, the pig fucking, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, that w- the, it wasn't just about that. That would be quite a, it was <laughs> just a film of a man watching hardcore. <laughs> That is just animal pornography. Isn't have it? you That's ever? Uh, step we don't away. need to spend a long time on this, but I'm yeah. curious to know if have you ever w- watched porn with a group of people? Um, I did when on a stag night. We we as an ironic joke, one of the boys brought along a quite hardcore pornography video, and this was before the internet really taken off as a as a place where you could watch these things yeah. quite easily. Uh, and I found it qu- quite embarrassing. Uh, and slightly ne- I never understood it. No. You know, that's, that's for private time. It's a solo moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe and that's just, my problem. Yeah. I don't know. I think pornography is very embarrassing. I was backstage. I was a d- film with Jessica Nappett and I w- wanted to check something on the internet and I realised the, the thing that comes up first if you put www in there it is a, a pornography site do you not have and uh, Jessica Knapp was disgusted don't with you me. use Google Chrome <laughs> no I don't come on mate <laughs> it's got the the whole point is it's got the incognito window <laughs> aka the wanky window <laughs> and it pops up and it's all grey and it's got a little it's got a little picture of a guy in a uh, trilby with his collar pulled up. <laughs> with shades on, like you're on spy business. <laughs> and of course, actually, the, the, the graphic should just be the same guy, but with his knob out. <laughs> and whatever you do in the, in the, within the confines of the wanky window okay. is, is not supposedly logged in your history okay. and doesn't pop up, but... I'm not moments. really ashamed of it, you know. I don't. I'm not bothered about it. Am I? I don't think my wife would mind. No, there's no. Re- I'm, well, I don't know. I'm not. But pornography in general is. It's. It's. You know. It would be better if it didn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> to engage your imagination. Well, that's true. I mean, you know. And also to. Do you remember in the old days when you used to have to? Occasionally, you have to have a, a wank again where you have to use your imagination, and it's very. It's, it's a very strange experience. <laughs> but that used to be. <laughs> That used to be the whole time. That used to be everything after the... And now, you know, I managed to do it and I didn't just use my brain. Yeah. Might be about being old as well. It's Uh, a good feeling. So if you um, were at a uh, supermarket, and uh, I think this is a very Adam Buxton... um, uh, You know, conundrum. Oh, yeah. I I bought a 12 from Sainsbury's. It cost 50p. I put 50p in the machine. Yep. And then as I put the 50p in, I noticed there's 45p in the coin tray already <laughs> that someone had forgotten to pick oh, up their yes. chain. So I got a 12 for 5p. I, pocket, I delightfully and delightedly pocketed the 45p. What would Adam Buxton do? Now, I didn't see the, the person had long gone. I didn't see that. It wasn't like I'd seen them not take it and then waited and jumped and pocketed it. There was no way of finding the person. Would you keep the 45p? That's yours, yeah. Yeah. That's a bonus. That's yeah. that's a uh, that's a cosmic bonus. <laughs> I mean, it, it's derisory considering all the um, nightmarishness that the cosmos is trying to offset. Yeah. With <laughs> <laughs> Instead of saying, well, you know, ISIS, but free twelve. Yeah. <laughs> or at least twelve for five p. It won't, even, <laughs> five it won't even give it you free. It's yeah. just saying, listen, I appreciate that. There's some horrible, horrible stuff going on. But look, you can have this for five p. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what about that? What yeah, no, I would take it. Yeah, sure. What if the person then ran back into the shop? You'd already pocketed the money. Uh, went, I oh, <laughs> my forty-five p. Would you just w- walk away, or would you say, "Hey, I"? I would probably give it to them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just feel guilty all the time, and I'm worried I'm going to get busted for all sorts of things. Yeah. 
So I do appreciate an opportunity to be upstanding. But I, st I get in, today I got into a confrontation. Well, after a, p a long period of thinking, oh, I'm, I think I'm out of my confrontation phase. Maybe I'm <laughs> sort of growing up a little bit, I don't know. And I was at Cambridge Station at the WH Smiths there, mm -hmm. getting my... Twills uh, and 96p. <laughs> They're very expensive in WH Smiths. That's outrageous. Well, I'm unlikely to get a free one after today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I go there all the time. There's always the same guy there, although today there were three serving people behind the counter. I don't know if they were trainees or what, but they were there in force. And I was, I'd been asked by my friend that I'm staying with, in fact, if I could pick up a pack of tobacco. And I know what kind of tobacco he likes, but I couldn't remember the name. Comes in a green packet, don't remember the name. So I went up and I said, oh, can I have a pack of tobacco? Yeah, what kind? Uh, I don't remember the name. Can I just see the, the, the tobacco stuff? No. <laughs> <laughs> because they're behind these big black shutters now, right? Yeah. That say you have to be over 18. And I'm like, okay. Uh, can I, seriously, can I, I can't see, can I just have a quick look and then I'll buy the one I want? No, you can't. Why is that? Because it's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, okay, but I mean, how do, I mean, you open it when people buy <laughs> cigarettes though, right? Yeah. So if I just say that I'm going to have some more Brolites, then you'll have to open it and give them to me. Uh, and he was like, well, do you want some more Brolites? I was like, uh, yes, okay, can I have a pack of more Brolites? And so the, the, the lady who was there, who looked furious with me already, was just sort of like, what is your fucking problem? She was looking at. And she kept on going, no, it's illegal. Do you want us to lose our jobs? I said, no, I just want some fucking tobacco and I can't remember the name of it. So, so I go, yeah, I'll have a pack of more Brolites then. <laughs> and by the way, I have no intention of buying the more Brolites, I said. I said, oh, well, then you can't have them. I was like, no, okay, sorry. Please, I would like a pack of more Brolites. <laughs> So she goes up to the, she stands in front of the cupboard. <laughs> Literally like that, as she opens it a crack, reaches in, grabs them and then closes it again. And so that'd be 11.99, thank you. How much it was, I was like, oh no, I've changed my mind, I don't want them now. <laughs> and she said, well, you should go. I, I said, why can't I just see what I'm buying. And the thing, the thing that was winding me up was how they were just falling back on saying, it's the rules, it's the rules, <laughs> yeah, yeah. we'll get arrested. Obviously, I knew that there was some goofy rule about you can't uh, display them openly for underage people, you have to be over 18. But I since checked the actual ruling. If you are <laughs> over 18, of course you can fucking look at that. <laughs> fucking <laughs> things to see what you're fucking buying, but you have to be over 18. Jesus Christ, <laughs> but these people, they, they were digging in so hard and just saying, no, no, it's illegal. Do you want us to pay a thousand pound fine and lose our jobs? I was like, wait, 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 wait. Just explain to me, like, I, wanted to, I wanted them to be able to say like <laughs> what the reason for the rule was so that I could say, yes, you're protecting children with this rule. Clearly, I'm over 18. <laughs> but we never got to that point and instead, I got my phone out and I started recording. Because <laughs> I thought, well, this, I don't know, it might be fun for the podcast or something. <laughs> so I got out my phone and I, I started pressing record and, the, uh, and the, the three of them were staring at me by that time. This, this lady was getting really upset. And by the way, I had been scrupulously polite. No swearing, no, no, uh, you know, name calling. No. So it's pretty great from Buckles <laughs> and so I start I start recording on my phone and I start saying right so I'm here at Cambridge Station I'm trying <laughs> to buy some tobacco I can't remember the name of it but they won't let me look in the cupboard and at that point the woman just runs off to the corridor like behind the stock room grabs the phone off the wall and goes give me the police <laughs> I need the police there's a very disruptive customer in the shop he's causing all kinds of trouble and then one of the other shop assistants sort of runs over to her and goes, I don't, I don't think we need that. <laughs> he's, he's got a pink Brompton. Look at <laughs> and I was saying right the way through, like, 
I'm not trying to wind you guys up. I'm really not. I just... We're human beings. <laughs> this is silly. We're, but we're all grown-up people. Yeah. And you're just, you, you're just sort of mouthing these rules as if... <laughs> and, and you're not thinking about why they're there and, w and what the reason for them is, you know. There's no children even in this shop. <laughs> this is madness. And, and, and the weird thing is that, that at the end of it, you know, you're, you, it's madness anyway because you're buying tobacco and that's madness. That's a form <laughs> of madness as well, isn't it? To hasten your own demise. And I just thought, it's, everything's fucking mad. <laughs> this is madness. There's no way we can survive. <laughs> but that was Cambridge. It wouldn't happen, it wouldn't happen in London. Londoners stick together. Obviously, I, but for me, those I, those moments are few and far between. For me, that's gold. You know, something like that happens to me. It's gold dust. Like I was before the shows, I was, I was talking about a, a fight I had when I was just approaching being forty, and you know, it meant that I had fifteen minutes for the show that I was about to right. do you know, straight away. And that story is immediate. Just bang, that's a that's a complete routine. So I, I had a, I had a confrontation with a postman that we talked about. I think in the, quite recently in the podcast. I won't go through the whole thing again. But I was actually quite pleased with it because it was te almost ten years to the day since I had this proper fight for someone. Yeah. And he was very angry with me because I posted too many Kickstarter awards into all the post boxes. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and then I went up to him and said, "Can you put these in the van?" He went, "No, I can't fucking put them in the van. You, you know, such a selfish man." He was furious with me. And we had about a ten minute, just quite heated discussion. But by the end of it, we were sort of friends. And it felt, you know, I, I shook his hand and said, Look, I'm sorry. We'd made each other laugh a little bit. He was quite a cool and nice guy. And I realised I was partly to blame, but not really. That's a good feeling. You know, really, I, I, yeah. I like it when they and go And then I like walked that. away and I actually felt, I was saying to people earlier that hey, punching someone in the face feels amazing. But actually walking away from that thinking, oh, actually we had a proper fight. Oh, but we, we but there, there was actual... Well, no, we, we had a proper argument. Right. But we, we, went, we both went away from it feeling like, okay. We're, we're okay with this. There was no physical... There was no physical fight. He was very... In the, he, was in the, he was sort of in the right... Except he said, I'm going to open one of these and find out your name and I'm going to get the, you fined. You're going to have to pay for this. And I said, well, you know, have I, have I not paid £500 worth of postage? Was that not the payment yeah. to put this in a post box? So, you know, it is when you get those, those two things colliding and they're in a bad mood and you've done... So, you know, I literally ruined his day by filling four post boxes with... with uh, Emergency question: Kickstarter books. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> but it's you know, I, I, it's not as good as that story. So you know, I'm going to pretend that happened. But to I me. no, but I, 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 I wish that I wish that we had made friends at the end. I even yeah. went up to the guy uh, as I was leaving the store, realizing because he he went off to help a customer with some water that wasn't included in the um, meal deal. <laughs> <laughs> and. I thought, I don't, you know, I see this guy all the time. This is nuts, you know, this is daft. So I went up and I was like, maybe he, maybe I just, they just were irritated by me. I don't know what. But I, I went up and I said, listen, I, I'm really sorry. I wasn't trying to, like, wind you up. And he just said, well, I know, but there's no answer to it, really. You're going to have to get in contact with the government. <laughs> But it's a, you know, so it's a very unusual thing when something resolves and you both more or less feel, you know, because people harbour grudges, don't they? People, and, and, you know, forever. Yeah, man. And, like, you know, so that, all that's happening in politics now, I was saying in the, in the last week's pod, podcast, uh, they're a much better audience last week. Uh, but um, <laughs> they, uh, you know, the, you, I, I tweeted things about the Labour Party six weeks ago and then people have waited six weeks to come back and go, oh, are you going to eat your words now? And, you know, <laughs> and they've just sort of delighted, not going, yeah, but nobody could have really foreseen this six weeks ago. So yeah. if, you, if you did, you were insane six weeks ago and I'm also delighted about what's happened. So it doesn't matter. But it's sort of the way that people will hold on to something and want to, you know, it's, it's very difficult to let things go. So it's nice to, in my story, that... And you attempted to let that go. Yeah. So, you know, and you had done absolutely nothing. It's a no, I mean, it was weird because usually I'm, I'm much more in the wrong than that. Yeah. <laughs> but it was weird this time. I, I like, like the ones when you're in the wrong the most. Oh, God. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I, I, t I talked on, my, on the Six Music Show years ago. In fact, it was one of the anecdotes where things got very frosty in the studio because <laughs> Joe didn't know. He felt it, it made him uncomfortable because it, was, it reflected very badly on me. <laughs> and so he then felt that it reflected badly on him by proxy. <laughs> so he was just squirming, and he's like, this is no good for anyone, this story. <laughs> and then 
ask our producer, James Sterling. He didn't actually do the cut gesture, but it was, he was reaching for it. And it was basically about me getting a ticket when I still lived in London. And uh, I'd, uh, it was, we were in the process of moving out of London. So we no longer had residence parking. I had a book of, of uh, temporary parking permits. Yeah. And so every time I got to the house, because we I, I was very gradually moving all my stuff out of there, every time the, I drove the car to the house, I would have to run into the house, grab a permit. Obviously, the most sensible thing would have been to keep them in the car, <laughs> but I would never remember. So I, I had to run into the house, grab a permit, and stick it in the car. And one time I did it, and in the space, literally 30 seconds of me running into the house and grabbing a permit, I got a ticket. Right. And I just fucking lost it. <laughs> and said, and just went, you are making things worse in the world. <laughs> you know, I, all the cliches, all the pathetic, small man things to say to someone who is just trying to do his job. I went for every single one. And then at a certain point, out of sheer desperation, latched onto the fact that at one point, this guy who was, you know, weathering all my nonsense, just went, oh, after one particularly bad point that I made, <laughs> he said, nigger, please. And he, th th he was a, a person of color, right? Okay. So he felt within his rights to use that expression. Yeah. But I, I said, how dare you? <laughs> How dare you. That is utterly unacceptable language. That is the most offensive thing I have ever heard. I am gonna report you. You can't use language like that. And I just went for that, milked it for ages. And then, and then I ended up stomping down the street, filming him on my phone. Uh, and then he called the cops. <laughs> And then at that point, I said, please, please don't call the cops. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm having a bit of a breakdown and I'm very sorry. Um, and, and then we had the, the same sort of thing that you described where we ended up shaking hands and he actually said to me like a film, you know, I think it, if it was like different circumstances, we could probably get on pretty well. <laughs> 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 and uh, yeah, it was, quite, it was quite beautiful, but only after, <laughs> Only after something that was really grotesque yeah. and, and sort of left, you, left me feeling insane and frightened for myself, yeah. you know what I mean? But it's thrilling, I mean that's, you know, it's a thrilling thing when well, the life overspills in that way and you lose your... You feel you alive! Lose, yeah. I mean, I do it with my wife all the time. I'm always arguing with my wife. Yeah, but know. are you good at the apology section? No. Ah. No, I just go and sulk until she forgets. Uh, <laughs> I thought we'd established <laughs> no one forgets. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so, but you know, to actually have a contretemps in real life with someone is. I but I think as you get older, I think it becomes, you know, I don't, in a way, that's not true though, is it? Because a lot of old people are the worst at it, aren't they? Yeah. And by the way, I'm shocked that I actually used that expression. I, in, uh, in the past, I've told that story. Obviously, when I told it on Six Music, I said N word. Yeah. But uh, uh, it's been so long. It's such, it's, it's such a shocking word, it isn't is. it? Oh, dear, it's terrible. Um, it would have been the wrong decision to, to use it on six music. <laughs> <laughs> but it was... Um, I said piss on six music and they nearly, they nearly shut the station down. Oh. I, dro I dropped a coffee on myself and, you know, and we... And I was like, oh, no, and then I went, it looks like I pissed myself, I think is what I said. Really? Yeah, and then I had to do an apology, five minutes later, I had to apologise. Oh. And there was quite a, quite a big hoo-ha. That's bad, yeah. yeah. It was never, it was always uncomfortable whenever things like that happened. Yeah. Everyone got so upset. I mean, six music, though, where there anything would go, you know, piss is fine, isn't it? You would think. It's all yeah. about rock and roll. It is. Who's listening? I mean, it's people who <laughs> listen to... Naughty music with swearing words. <laughs> it is. Yeah, um, let's have a look at what I... Cause I'm, well, let's talk about your podcast. You came up with this good idea of uh, interviewing... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sort of comedian celebrities. And you've turned into quite the success. Yeah. <laughs> Award-winning. Yeah, we've had... We've had uh, amazing guests on there. We had uh, uh, Rich Herring, <laughs> uh, Scroobius Pip, 
Uh, I'm basically just going to reel through a load of people who <laughs> were on your podcast first. But that's the way it works. No, well, Angus, it? you've had lo- you've, we, it's been a bit of bit of both, and you've managed to get some people that I w- well, I think because the the nice thing about your one, I think, is that you go where they are. Yeah. Rather than saying you have to come here, and a lot of people get put off by the idea of you, know, you can understand. I mean, look, <laughs> look at some of the people who are you know, literally within they could spit at you here or throw yeah. throw their excrement. <laughs> And they have done on many occasions. So it's a qu- that's quite an intimidating thing for... Indeed. Someone like Michael Palin, who I would l- is my absolute dream guest, who you got, and it's a beautiful... Um, you know, I don't think I could do anything uh, approaching what you did with Michael Palin. I would have been keen to hear who would have been in his human centre. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I think the, pro- the ones that people I'm in awe of, I find it very difficult to... To A, to do that, but also to resist the, uh, <laughs> resist the urge to ask them the most inappropriate <laughs> well, questions. Exactly. Just knowing it will ruin the everything. You know, you built up a nice... That's imagine you built up a nice report yeah. with Michael Palin, you've talked about uh, the death of your father and the, and it's, uh, the illness of his friend. Yeah. And then you go, have you ever tried to suck your own cock? <laughs> <laughs> Which is what I would do. <laughs> but, it's but ultimately, that is the right thing to do. <laughs> yeah. That's why your podcast is very funny and good. And I've listened to more episodes of your podcast than any other and liked them. Like, I listen to many other podcasts, but you go through phases with them. You know, you fall in and out of love with them. And uh, I don't think I've ever really fallen out of love with yours. And I'm constantly surprised by it. Who is the... What's the name of the, the um, Tourette's hero yeah, lady? Yeah, Jessica uh, Tom. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. I, and I was thinking, like, what other podcast would be like this, this combination of surprising, interesting, funny, weird, spontaneous stuff. It was, it was brilliant, an eye-opener. So listeners, if you haven't heard that one, which episode is it? Oh, God, oh. no, it's about 130-something. Jess right. Tom. Jess Tom. It's um, really great, because I didn't know about her, and, no. and, and I just well, I that's was going the nice through. Thing, you do, I mean, you have a nice mix as well. I mean, I think it's, it's interesting. I think both of us are doing something we really enjoy doing. It's, yeah. a, it's such a pleasure doing this show. Like I was just saying, like ba- backstage and <laughs> here, it's such nearly always just incredibly good fun. So it's a it's a lovely job to do, and we're both creating a world that's our own world, and we're in charge of that world in both the things we do. Um, I did it first, uh, and uh, <laughs> you, you came on and said, "Oh, I'll I'll do that then and win all the awards then," <laughs> <laughs> and managed to somehow transfer it into getting onto TV as well. I don't know how he did that. Uh, so uh <laughs> I've been I've been banned. <laughs> no, I'm ahead in the I'm ahead in a jar in the new Yeah, you are. So Crystal Maze yeah. reboot. Yeah. <laughs> How was that? Have you recorded those already? Yeah, yeah, I mean that was uh four not very strenuous days work. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, in Futurama they have their heads in the yeah. jars, same sort of thing. They've got a future zone in this reboot of the Crystal Maze, hosted by Richard A. Wadi. And um I am the head in the jar. They haven't even bothered to make it look as if my head is floating <laughs> in the jar. It's clearly just a guy with his head stuck through a jar. And also, also they designed it so that it looked okay from a certain camera position. But actually, when you go behind the, the set and stick your head through it, it's unbelievably uncomfortable. <laughs> and you're in this sort of precarious position, and they put out a couple of pillows or something. But depending on how long, and, and I give riddles to the people who go in there, and yeah. if they get the riddle right, they get a crystal. And depending on uh, how long it took them to do the riddles, I was sometimes stuck in this like really difficult position, trying to hold my head up through this hole for about 15 minutes. And uh, you know, I'm nearly 50, and so my th- I'd get pins and needles in my legs, and I wouldn't really be able to walk when when I shout out the answer. This. Fish! Yeah. It's oh, man. It was very... Mo- most of the riddles they didn't get right at all. Um, and I felt like, oh, this is weird. Why isn't it... This should be easier. I thought these riddles were quite easy. I retooled some of them to try and make them more accessible. But it was good fun, though. Yeah, yeah. They built a massive, great set out there in Bristol. At right. The, the Bottle Yard or whatever it's called. It's huge studios out there. and It looks magnificent. R- Richard is very funny. I really had to do about 15, 20 minutes of... <laughs> work <laughs> a day and that was it and they had good wi-fi in the dressing room so <laughs> it was fun that's very exciting um 
And well, you got to go. You went to America as well with your with your podcast. You yeah, I did. I did. So how are you, how are you funding all of this? Are you doing this all? Are you, are you managing to do this through the well, sponsorships? Yeah, that? yeah. So it's good old Squarespace. Yeah. Where where would the podcasting world <laughs> be without? Squarespace? I turned them down. Yeah. Well, you. I mean, you uh, don't do any ads, though. Right? I don't. Weirdly, on this one. I've done, which I'm, I meant to ask about it backstage. Oh, you do sort of. Um, well, I've pr- I publicised this. On this one, ones. I've done a thing, as if you were watching at the beginning, I've, uh, I've changed energy providers. And I would think you might have you mentioned oh, this. Oh, bulb, yeah. Yeah. And so now we're competing on this. But <laughs> I, I think they're quite good, and they haven't, they haven't asked me th- to sponsor something. Uh, so I thought I'd just mention they were good. Right. But then also, if you give a code out and people want to change their energy providers to that, they get a £50 credit, and I get a £50 credit. And I hopefully never have to pay for energy ever again. Right. <laughs> well, they, they supposedly... Um, and they're ethical. It's renewable energy. And they're one of the, they're, yep. it's cheaper. It is currently so, cheaper. Uh, but also, by, not, by them not paying me, and um, I can, if they're shit, I can in the next podcast go, no, don't go. And they were, they were <laughs> yeah. awful. We <laughs> Thanks tr- for the 50 pounds. We, we tried to switch the bulb, um, but we weren't eligible because we're out in a part of the country and that our meter system isn't uh. compatible. So I'm still planning they on doing They sound pretty it. shit, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, yeah, the, the sponsorship is good. I mean, I, every now and again, I will come across that Bill Hicks routine <laughs> where he's just going on about Jay Leno doing uh, Doritos ads or whatever and saying, you know, if you do an ad, you're off the artistic roll <laughs> yeah, call yeah. for life. No exceptions. Well, maybe Willie Nelson. Um, but... And, and it always chastens me and makes me feel a little bit queasy. But then I just think, well, Bill, it's a different world <laughs> now. Uh, the podcast model and the funding model wasn't something that Hicks was familiar with. And I'm sure he wouldn't have, I'm sure he wouldn't have done that routine if Squarespace had been around. But if you're, if you're using that money to go and do podcasts elsewhere, then yeah. that's, you know... It's yeah, here's the thing, right? Because I, I do think about crowdfunding and Patreon and things like that. But how does it work with you? I would think that if, if, if that was my only funding model, source of income, whatever, to cover costs for the podcast, I would feel that I had to put all that money in a pot and I wasn't allowed to touch it for anything other than the podcast. Yeah, yeah. That's the deal, right? Yeah, it sort of is. It becomes complicated by the fact that like Kickstarter, is, doing the Kickstarter is actually much more complicated than doing the show. Right. So Chris Evans, not that one, uh, basically <laughs> works for about two months fulfilling all these pledges and doing all this stuff. That's the thing. So that, you yeah. can't just go... To begin with, I was very much like, no, all the money goes back into the podcast, but you're paying people to do the, the jobs that they're doing. So, you know, I think... I think that I, I think with this, and what I'm trying to do with this is get everyone to give me a pound a month. Or buy... You know, if everyone who listened to the podcast bought my emergency questions book from gofasterstrike.com... Yeah. Uh, at ten pounds each, that would be t- two million pounds. I would have. So uh, then, I then I could do some exciting stuff. And you know, that, I think that the money from that does does all go back into into making more podcasts. And that doesn't seem like that much to ask, really. If you like, I agree. One hundred and fifty podcasts, I'm and li- still get a book of uh, qu- questions that will be interesting in a I'm looking social at situation. The, uh, emergency questions book now. It's open to uh, page sixty. First question: Are you a racist? <laughs> That is, <laughs> and then it says underneath NB. They'll probably say no, but you might catch one out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy it. Yeah, I'll, gi- I'll give you one for free. Uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that that was the thing though, because I, I was I, I suddenly got into this scenario where it's like, well, if the podcast goes well, and it is, I do enjoy doing it, but it is very time consuming. Yeah, yeah. And easily every other thing that I have in my stupid career may fall away. And then I'm not allowed to use any of the money <laughs> that I'm generating from this thing other than for more episodes of the podcast. Yeah. So if one of my family gets terminally <laughs> ill and, and I need to uh, get a bit of extra It's healthcare. a complicated thing, and I think it comes from sort of the in- English or British embarrassment. And we, you know, and I, and I, when I started off, I was A, I wasn't charging anyone anything for any of the podcasts. Mm. I, I, then I thought, well, if we charge people, then we might be able to do more interesting stuff and bigger, bigger shows and... You know, like if I if I could raise a huge amount of money, it would be like let's make a film, let's make a sitcom, let's you know. So it's all to make more stuff. But I was actually on a panel with Roman Mars, uh, who's a big American podcaster, and uh, he was on in on the screen, and he couldn't believe that I wasn't taking any money at all for myself from it. So I think, but but with me, it works because people come and see my tour. Yeah. 
and you know, people come see this show and I get some of the money from the audience here and so you know it, it does it does become a, a way of making some money but yeah. it's you know uh, it, I, I think it's it's interesting but I, I, but I also think you sort of probably have to do you have to think of some way to do it a lot of people come to me and ask about Kickstarters and you go I think the reason my Kickstarters have worked is because I gave five years of free stuff or you know I give a lot of free stuff and yeah. I give quite good rewards so people do are happy to do it every now and again but it's you know it's it's quite a complicated way of it really is. Working. I mean, I I, I I I justify it for myself by keeping my ads fairly short. They're yeah. at the beginning generally, and they're funny. So you do. I a really try. Good I try to make them funny. Unfortunately, my lack of musical skills means that more <laughs> or less all my songs sound the same. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's it's extremely good. Um, are you, has has the uh, has your relationship with Rolf Harris going? I always check. Ah. In. I check in every three years. What's his years. status? Has he well, got Well, he's out. He's out now, and I think he was uh, found remarkably innocent of was the he? last. I think of the, I, I believe that's what happened the last time, or at least not guilty. Ruffle, good one. Yeah. So he's, I think he's uh, he's uh, <laughs> he's out. But there's, you know, I think his name has been tarnished. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think he won't be drawing a portrait of the Queen again. <laughs> was he? Oh, I've got to find out about this. Hey, I'll tell you one thing I was going to ask you about yeah. about like stories and things that you're not quite clear on that you need to look up. Is you know you've mentioned a few times on this podcast. Why is it that Kevin Bacon did those yeah. ads? So do you know the answer? I to do that? know the answer because people right. tell me every time I mention it. Oh, but I, I still see. don't. Okay. I still don't. So still he don't was in the Ponzi. It. He was caught up in the Ponzi scheme. I, I wouldn't pronounce it Ponzi. Ponzi. <laughs> Ponzi. <laughs> I'd emphasize the Z to take Ponzi. it away. Ponzi. Ponzi, but yeah. <laughs> but I still Bernie think Madoff is the person that fucked yeah. him over, yeah. Yeah. But I would still argue that he's probably made enough money. There's back. other ways <laughs> there's other ways to make money than And to he, do but he's probably got all that back and he's still carrying on dressed up in his brief. And it's you know, fucking I mean I, I I used to really be have a you know, be Bill Hicks about all sure. that sort of stuff. And I'm really not now because I think I think anything you do and you can say you know, oh, you know, you're doing a you're doing a show on any commercial channel. You're funded by advertising. Yeah. You know, and you know everything's you're selling something. I mean, you're if you look at yourself, at yeah, the very the very least. So. Occasionally, I'll find myself reading YouTube comments for this and that clip from the BBC or whatever, and the arguments raging under there between people who are convinced that the BBC is just uh, a bastion of left wing bias, and then other just as many people yeah. who say that they're, they're all right-wingers, they're all fascists, and, you know, it's... Yeah, you can't win. No, you can't win. And with a large corporation, there's going to be uh, unpleasant aspects about them, and that's why I stick to vegetarian shoes. <laughs> <laughs> as my sponsor. <laughs> but I also think, it pa I think it's a slightly patronising attitude towards the public, which I think is a problem with a lot of these things. So all the thing with the Daily Mail and the... The sun, people going, oh, they're, t they're polluting people's minds. They're, you know, they're, they're, they're brainwashing. You. And then nobody votes, you know, everyone votes against what the <laughs> yeah. Daily Man and the Sun's there in any case. And I don't think people are, you know, I don't think people are listening to you going, oh, Adam Buxton just mentioned Squarespace. I'd better build my own website. Because uh, Adam, Bu I love Adam Buxton and he'll be cross with me if I don't build it. If you yeah. listen to that and think, oh, I want to build a, a website and I want £10 off or 10% off or whatever it is, then yeah, go for it. Yeah. And if you don't, then it's paid for, the, it's paid for everything else. I so think I, think, I don't think people are stupid. People r watch adverts and know that they're a load of shit. You know? In the depths of my uh, Bill Hicks induced anxiety, <laughs> one time I, made a <laughs> I went and researched all the people I respect who've done adverts. <laughs> To try and cheer myself up, <laughs> make myself feel less of a filthy <laughs> whore. <laughs> David Lynch, he's done loads. Has he, yeah. With that, so um, that surprised me. Nissan, PlayStation, Adidas, Japanese Georgia coffee with Carl McLachlan as a Twin Peaks guy. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Alka Seltzer, Rene Magritte. His clients were Belgian bookshops, a jeweler, and Alfa Romeo. <laughs> <laughs> Ridley Scott, obviously, Salvador Dali, Andy Warhol, Michelle Gondry, they've all done it. Yeah. Dirty fuckers. <laughs> 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 anyway, um, yeah, well, let's, uh, I'll, ask, I'll ask you, uh, let's, I'll pick an emergency question for you. Just for the fun. I, I was, do, do you, were you hit by the death of Roger Moore? That's not the emergency question. Uh, I, uh, I, I felt sad about it. It, wasn't, it was not Bowie proportions. No. <laughs> You met, you d interviewed him, didn't you, Roger Moore? You and yes, you well, and jo Joe was the big uh, Roger Moore obsessive. Yeah. And Joe sort of froze up um, 
with excitement <laughs> at having Sir Roger there in the studio. And we didn't really have guests on our Six Music show, so it was very unusual. Yeah, right. But he was really charming, yeah. really sweet, and <gasps> like responded the nicest possible way you could in that sort of situation. He wasn't patronizing at all. He was just un unruffled and, uh, you know, he's, he's lovely. No. He was. Um, not anymore. But, uh, <laughs> no, not anymore. <laughs> Um, which was your favourite McWurter twin? Ross. Ross, yeah. Which one, which one got killed? Ross was the one who was murdered by the RA. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they're both dead now. Right. I'd heard stories about Norris McWurter. They used to, um, he was, they were, I mean, they were quite unpleasant uh, right-wing gentlemen, both of them. And uh, Norris was especially uh, of that persuasion. Really? And the, uh, someone who worked on Record Breakers told me they used to deliberately surround him with as many children from ethnic minorities as they could <laughs> <laughs> in, order to, in order to upset him so he could that do seems, it. it. It seems strange that um, Roy Castle would hang out with him. Yeah. He couldn't have been like well, that. Well, the thing with the McWhirt twins is they, no one else could do that job, could they? Because they learnt the fucking book. Right. So, you know, they, they were in. They didn't matter what they thought. No one could step in. Yeah. Couldn't go, oh... <laughs> I did a good noise when you told me that he'd been killed by the IRA. Yeah. I went, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's my atrocity noise. <laughs> Whenever I hear of some new horrible attack. <laughs> what is your favourite fraction? <laughs> favourite? Can I ask what yours is first? Um, I quite like um, three-eighths, I would say. I like two-thirds. Yeah, two-thirds is good. Because that's probably where I'm at in my life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if I'm lucky. <laughs> well, let's talk about that. I'm turning 50 in one month from the date of this recording. Yes. Uh, and you are, you just turned 48, I think, if you're just at your birthday. That's right, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So if, are you feeling the approach of 50? Uh, oh, I soul? thought you were going to say the scythe. <laughs> <laughs> yes, would be the answer to that. No, I am, I am. I'm, uh, I think, fairly... Yeah, I've been bollocking on about it to a lot of my guests on the podcast. But yeah, since my dad died, it's just all completely crashed down on me, the whole mortality. Yeah, I, but your dad was a, a pretty old, old man. Yeah, but I was cheering myself up with that fact and thinking, <laughs> and kind of thinking, oh yeah, my dad, he lived to 91, nearly 92. I'm going to live to 91, nearly 92. But I don't take care of myself. <laughs> The way that my dad, I mean, my dad was, you know, he, he wasn't like a model of uh, super fitness or anything, but he did like smoke right the way through the Second World War and uh, drink booze a great deal through the rest of his life. And, you know, so I was hopeful. But then everyone I've spoken to since then has been like a close friend of mine. We were talking about this the other day and he said, nah, 70. <laughs> Probably 70, that's, you know, and, I, and <laughs> I always look through the obituaries and stuff and yeah. there's a lot of 70s. There are, yeah, there was a lot, 68, 70. Is, I think that's the age yeah. for, for our generation, that's projected curtains. Right. Uh, especially That's still 20 years. 22 years. 20, that's I mean, I know, nothing like, these I days. I mean, it's like unbelievable. The, so, so three years since that's I saw you, I, I would literally said that was 18 months, yeah. Jen. So like, it, and if that could have been, if you told me it was six months ago, I would have believed you. Yeah. Like, you know, it was very fresh in my mind. Uh, but yeah, so those three years going very fast. It's that scary. And 10 years since I was 40, you know, 40 was a big deal. I'm not that worried about 50. I mean, I'm slightly worried about those. Th I'm slightly worried yeah. about... Well, um, when did you, have you had a crisis already? Yeah, then? I mean, I think 40, I was fairly... How did it manifest itself? Well, I was single, so it was, I was getting drunk and hanging around with people in their 20s and fighting university lecturers. And <laughs> I was really, up, I mean, I was, I was counting down the days. How you know, were you fighting university lecturers? I had a fight with a university lecturer. That was my fist fight that I had when I was 40. Whoa. Uh, what was it about? Uh, History. Well, uh, no, it was about him. <laughs> he'd been an appalling dick, basically, and he'd and, and got into an argument with some young women that I was attempting to have sex with. Right. Uh, and so, well, one of them I was, or two if I got lucky. But, uh, and uh, <laughs> uh, and then, then he got violent towards them, and then he was dragged out of the bar, but then he waited outside the bar for us and then launched himself at me. And I would usually, any other time, I would have walked away from it. But I was just completely. And I, and what I did he? Did, did he? What did he, he go for? Me. So he tried punched to kick this girl. He tried to kick this girl downstairs, what? and all his friends dragged him out. He's a cad. He was an awful <laughs> man. And he's, you know, then it turned out he was a university lecturer after all this, which is kind of even oh. worse. Uh, 
Uh, what, did, what did he lecture in? I don't know. I think I, I, I did meet someone. It was a very complicated thing. I met, met someone I think who knew him. Um, it was again, it was about, it, it was all came out. It was sort of a race thing as well because the girl, he was, this girl I was with had taken dislike to him. We were having a conversation about Big Brother and it was the week where the lady said the N-word that you said earlier. Right. Uh, <laughs> and I would never say. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and uh, so we were having that discussion about race. And she was saying she thought racism was funny because it was so ridiculous that being racist was ridiculous. So she found it funny. I said, yeah, probably don't ever say that out loud to anyone. <laughs> but I, I get what you're talking about. But then this, she, this guy gave his business card to this uh, girl that he fancied and, and she handed it around and this girl started ripping up this guy's business card, which was a sort of odd thing to do. Whoa. And he said, why did you do that? And she said, it's because I am a racist. Oh. Uh, and uh, which didn't make much sense to me. He was, he was white and she was white <laughs> and everyone was white. And then he went, my wife is black. <laughs> and, then went f and then flew into a tizzy. I don't understand why that really makes any difference and also why was he chatting up that girl uh, <laughs> and giving her a business card so it, but I think having met some people I think he was sort of lying he was he had a f he had a friend who was black or something that is, that is that's exactly the kind of night that I do not miss yeah <laughs> that's the sort of thing that marriage cures yeah <laughs> or at least it's supposed to well you know I'm delighted I mean I sh shortly after that but within a few months I'd met my wife and everything changed for the better and that was so I had a, that was a very stabilizing influence in, yeah. in, in you know, and, and saved me, really. I think if I hadn't had that happen, I mean, I think it would have happened somehow, you know, someone with some, some, some idiot who <laughs> fell in love with me. But, uh, but uh, you know, I think if I hadn't, I would have been screwed. Yeah. Because I would have just been carrying on drinking, and it was already getting to the point where it was... Now, at 50, the idea of spending a night drinking with someone who's 22 seems insane. Like, yeah. just, like we're on two different, such different continents that that... Just, you know, and certainly in a romantic way. Just Probably on incontinence. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there at 40, you, so, you know, it felt sort of weird and a bit wrong, but yeah. just about acceptable. So it's, it's you know, there's a, there's a big change in those 10 years, but those 10 years have gone so fast. That's, that's, so that's the scary. I mean, a lot has happened and lots of great stuff's happened. But, it's, but then that's the thing, going 10 years to... I see, I think when, if you die in your 50s, people go, oh, God, that's... But if you die in your 60s, people go, yeah. yeah. He had his chance. <laughs> <laughs> he did and so, he you did. know, I'm 11, oh, well, I'm 10 years, two months, or 10 years and a, a month and a day away from being in my 60s. Yeah. So, you know, that's, that's kind of terrible. And, and my kids will be uh, teenagers as I'm, as I'm <laughs> coping with that, which will be, which will be another story. Uh, does it, dip, do you hate hearing people talk about it? I mean, I, I like it, personally. Um, I, do, I really talk about it. My wife won't let me talk about it anymore because I'm always talking about it. Oh, what, really? Yeah, I, I'm always saying that what she should do if I die. And Have you written I'm always working out what we should do if there's a terrorist attack where we are. And I'm always giving her advice about what she must do. That sounds sensible. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, sounds very sensible. And I'm ready to chuck myself in. I mean, the, the, as terrible as all that uh, London Bridge stuff obviously was, the stories you get of the guys who stood up to that are just phenomenal and though when you think about it um they had two from their point of view they had bombs on them and yeah. people were going and confronting them so i would hope that you know you would be in that but it's so moving and incredible those those guys i know and in america as well that yeah. fucking uh white supremacist mm. twat on the train and those two guys that yeah went for him who got killed for their trouble awful yeah uh i probably wouldn't <laughs> <laughs> I don't think if I was on my own I don't think I would I mean I'd wait and see if there was absolutely no one else yeah. <laughs> then I would say listen I really think you should <laughs> you should stop that and I'm going to get my phone out and start <laughs> recording this <laughs> there's a good chance it's going to end up on the podcast so think about that I don't want to have to tell you again <laughs> Well, we're perhaps not there. I, I, was I took my daughter to Little Jim the other day. I want to talk to you about this and see whether, how you feel about this. Uh, I took my daughter to Little Jim, and, uh, which is they do climbing up. Oh, right. And it's stuff not a stuff. pirate. No. <laughs> <laughs> they do. <laughs> they do. They do I've dressed as one today. Oh, <laughs> Phoebe. <laughs> Hello, Phoebe. That's what he sounds like, Little Jim. But, uh, you know, I'm a, there's lots of... Dads are different ages there, of yeah. course, right? So I'm an older dad, and I've got a young daughter. But there was a guy who was a very tall, very athletic man, 
Mm. He was probably about six foot five. Ooh. And he had a three-year-old son, I'd say. And he was throwing him in the air, but not just throwing him in the air. He was throwing them so the roof was twice as high as this, and he was throwing him so he was nearly touching the roof. Uh. And then catching him. <laughs> and my daughter looked at me, and went, yeah, you threw that, do that. You know, she really wanted, she's very adventurous. So I threw her like, she was still in my hands. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but a tiny little bit. And you know, I'm a shorter man, and you're a shorter man, and I'm, we're older men, and I, I have y- uh, younger kids than you do. But it's, do, do, you, do you look at taller men like that and think, you know? <laughs> Would you like that, or do you have it? Because people, you're meant to have a complex about me. One is meant to have a complex about being short, and I count myself as a Oh, one man. does. Uh, <laughs> do you have it? Because I don't really ha- have it. I don't, it. That was the first time I went, oh, that would be nice. I don't have it anymore, because there's other things to worry about. Yeah. Uh, you know, there, there's more urgent problems when you look in the mirror these days than just, I'm not saying you, I'm saying <laughs> one. True. Um, but you know the folds, the folds, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the mottling, the rippling. The <laughs> but um, yes, I, I used to. I used to have a massive complex about it, yeah. and I think are you are, are a lot of your friends tall. I mean, not m- sh- some are, but not not. not Most of mine massive, are, and you've got very lanky friends. You yeah, very lanky, lanky friends. My wife is considerably taller than yeah. I am. And, uh, you know, it doesn't take a genius to realize that I've got a complex about it. <laughs> a small man. Because I do think, I mean, I think most of the studies have shown that, like, for example, CEOs, people in positions of power tend to be taller. There are always exceptions that prove the rule, of Napoleon, course. Napoleon, who was actually... Napoleon is the one that people come back but to. But he wasn't that small. Adamant used to cheer me up when I was younger <laughs> really? because he was diminutive. Um, but then he went crazy and started <laughs> throwing things through shop windows, so he let us all down. But um, no, it would obviously be nicer to be a bit taller yeah. and to have some easy charisma. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, would it though? But what kind of you know? The only what good kind thing of a about man would you be? Well, I don't know. I mean, I'd probably be awful. <laughs> but it would be They're fun. They're all awful, those tall people. That's They're right. quite arrogant they are. and haughty. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also, they pay for it when they're travelling. They're often uncomfortable. And yes, that's, that's true. <laughs> for Buckles, it's first class wherever I go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like Ronnie Corbett in the, in the big chair. <laughs> So that's nice, and I, I'm generally comfortable in bed and things like that. I'd rather be uh, witty and clever, though, than... T- I mean, it'd be nice to be both, I think, but it'd be, uh, if you had to choose between the two, it's nice to be witty, isn't it, than be strapping and throwing a child into the roof. <laughs> I mean, <I've laughs> And I don't think... You, I couldn't have given him my... It's the kind of thing, if you... That situation, if I'd gone up and said, my daughter would really like to be thrown into the roof, but I can't do it. Can you do it? <laughs> That's a very different thing, isn't it? Because if he drops and <laughs> kills his own kid, you know, he's in trouble with his wife, but it's okay. <laughs> if he drops my child, that's, an, that's another. If you drop a, ch- a child you don't know by throwing... I mean, like, fucking hell. I mean, I, I'm, so, I'm so timid, really. I'm getting better. My daughter's so adventurous that she's making me more adventurous, weirdly. Uh-huh. But the idea of the risk involved of literally throwing a, uh, him six feet above... No, it's appalling. Well, you and I spoke about this on... <laughs> On my podcast, that, that, that weird um, vertiginous thing that you get of, of, of just imagining all the terrible things, especially when they're very yes, little. Yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah, oh, yeah. it's awful, and I'm so glad I'm out of that <laughs> section. <laughs> now they're just responsible for themselves. Although now, quickly, you know, they're getting into clearly finding me tiresome. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a whole other sad stage that I'm going to have to go through. My son's turned into a a kind of vinyl snob. Right. So he's now going and buying with his pocket money and then just getting my wife to buy for him all these records on vinyl that I already have on CD. <laughs> but he's turning his nose up at them because it's like, oh no, CDs sound crap. <laughs> so he's going and buying all these things. He's like a proper creepy old vinyl snob. <laughs> and so he, but he's too timid to ask for what he wants in the record shop in Norwich. So my wife has to go up and say, um, excuse me, um, do you have any uh, early Aphex Twin or <laughs> any um, hangable autobarb or V-snares? Uh, any early drill and bass? 
and my son kind of ha hangs out at the back of the shop. This is bad. I shouldn't be talking about <laughs> it. <laughs> but uh, it is. It's quite nice, though. I do. It's nice to bond with him over that stuff. Yeah. It's it's nice. I mean, there's there's more good days than bad days being a dad. But it is scary yeah. sometimes. Yeah. When yeah. you just think about what a stupid person <laughs> I am. <laughs> And oh dear, it's shocking. I think you, I, I think you'd be a, you must be an amazing dad. You must be an amazing person. No, because I'm so ignorant. Well, that's good. I that's don't know. That's what you wanted, a dad. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I suppose they're not going to feel intimidated by me intellectually. <laughs> certainly. <laughs> but it's being fun. My my dog's already outgrown my sense of humour, so I'm I'm, 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 just only two and a quarter. I'm hoping she'll come back, but I, I'll get a bit bit of time with her. But she's she's completely. <laughs> she thinks I'm an idiot. Yeah, <laughs> is she doing jokes still? Yeah, she's well. She's. I was saying the, the other because she sort of does little funny things, and I think she is going to be funny. She was messing around with the jigsaw and putting the jig, putting the jigsaw pieces deliberately in the wrong place. Classic. Yeah, classic <laughs> stuff. It's good Five stuff. stars, yeah. the Scotsman. <laughs> <laughs> she knew. She knew it was wrong. But there's something else she was doing. I can't remember what it was, but she. No, she is. She's. We have. <laughs> we have good. When she forgets that she is above me. Yeah, uh, and she just so is. She's so. I mean, I think the weird thing is, me, neither me and my wife are cool people. We're both quite nerdy, dweeby people, and quite shy people. And she's, our daughter is v quite cool. Mm. Like she's got some sun sunglasses we bought on holiday, and she was wearing a new app the other day. And I wanted to take a photo for the, her auntie who had bought it, and she she, she put the sunglasses on and just went. <laughs> and I was, I was going, say cheese. And she just went, and then the minute the camera went down, she went. <laughs> <laughs> so she kind of was posing already and she knew what being cool was. It's innate. I yeah. think it's it's part of the you know, the, the biological makeup on a genetic level of the human race <laughs> is changing and adapting to Instagram and various <laughs> other apps. It's they, they understand all that Completely. innately. It's weird. It's like when they pick up devices and they instantly understand yeah. that you have to swipe them and do this kind of thing. You know, it's weird. It is freaky. But it's a very, it's a, you, should, you should definitely have, if you haven't got children, have them. Have them, because... Have them, even because whether you want them or not. There's loads you can of or not. resources. Uh, we're fine for resources for, <laughs> for the foreseeable future. Everything's going well. Late, there's going to be another election within the next six months. Jeremy Corbyn's going to get in. He's going to sort everything out. <laughs> Uh, so have some children to enjoy that fun park of a, <laughs> of a world. It's all right. It's all right. Well, we should probably wrap up at some point soon. Um, I well, I was going. I'm going to move to the countryside. I was going to ask yes. about advice about that. Moving we're also we're buying the country, a tree. Going to eat a lot of peaches. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was singing when we moved. <laughs> <laughs> Moving to the country. Going to eat a lot of peaches. <laughs> Do you not remember that song? <laughs> <laughs> Presidents of the United States of America. Yeah. yeah. You don't remember them? No. no. I've heard of them, but I don't, you know, I'm not extreme music. Um, it's, a child, it's a childish thing. Um, we're getting a dog. Yes. My wife. Um, You're is, becoming me. Yeah. My wife. Um, we have. It's difficult to choose a name, right, for a dog. This is a little. Yep. She's only a puppy at the moment. We're not getting it for a, a few weeks. Is it a lady dog or a it's man a girl dog? dog or a and it's a half German Shepherd, half Husky. Oh. And my wife wants to call her. I think it's going to be because I can't think of anything. She's going to call her Wolfie. <laughs> Wolfie is quite common. I've got a friend who's got a Wolfie. Yeah. I mean, there's worse names though. There is. I'm um, going to have a son as well, and we, and we have to think of a name for him as well. Right. I've tried to get booze into both the dog and the and the babe, which is a, from a routine of mine. There's a character in the Bible called Booze of Rachab, or ah. Boaz of Rachab. Well, there's a lawyer in S-Town in that podcast called Boozer somewhere. <laughs> there like is, yeah, Boozer yeah, Downs. Yeah, there is. I've noticed it. That's but a good one. But my wife won't let me call my son Booze. <laughs> booze Herring. Not even as a middle name? No. <laughs> That's a shame. But it's quite, I'm finding it quite hard to... We, with, Phoebe, we kind of quite settled on Phoebe and we both agreed on Phoebe. Phoebe's quite a early. lovely name. Yeah, but we can't think of, and I can only say, I only do joke names, so I'm always trying to get yeah, red, I got some, red I got or... Yeah, I some joke names in there. Rufus, because yeah. it's red, means red header, that's, and I nearly got Rufus through for the, for the boy. I think Rufus Herring's quite a nice name, but... Booze would be good. You booze. Go, lobby for booze again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we, when we got our little dog, who is now called Rosie, um, and uh, our, our son, Natty, wanted to call her Steve. 
<laughs> Which I still think would have been the better name. That's a sort of stylish name. It is. I really lo I love calling animals by a. I love calling it well, uh, like a full the first name and a second name. I yeah. Think that's, always, that's always great yeah. with an animal. I nearly got my wife to call the dog Liz Lemon because <laughs> she's a big fan of 30 Rock. Yeah. I just love to go, Liz! Liz! <laughs> just seems so wrong for a dog. Liz! <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think we're going with Wolfie. Wolfie's fine. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> but to be fair, she wants to call her Professor Wolfenstein. Oh so yeah. when the dog's in trouble, it's Professor Wolfenstein! <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is quite good. <laughs> That's fine. I mean, yeah. it's no worse than calling your son Titus. Yes. Like, people constantly, they still, in the modern world, give, them, give their children names like Titus. Yeah. There was someone in the shop at the airport the other day with, who was going after, I think it was, I can't, it was either a Titus or it was something like a Hercules or I don't know yeah. what. I, I, tr I was gunning for Hercules. We live in Hercules Terrace at the moment. Oh, the right. Moment. Hercules is yeah. good. Hercules Herring. <laughs> Hercules Herring. Come for the, on! For the, for the son, that's not the dog. That would be ridiculous for a female dog. But for uh, Hercules Herring. Do it! Yeah. What would it yeah. shorten to? Herc? Herc. 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 There was Herc a Herc Herc in the wire, wasn't there? Yes, there was. Yeah, Herc. Yeah, Herc. Go for that. Herc. Herc Herring. I'm behind you. Herc. Because there was the people suggesting uh, Heath and things like that. You can't have Heath Herring. It's too the. They've got you know Heath Herring. It's too. But my dad's called Keith Herring. I didn't really realise. So the <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's fine. So Heath Herring. No. It sounds like Keith Herring. Uh, Keith Herring. Yeah, the Herring. The uh, yeah. The the gay artist. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> the gay artist. <laughs> the gay, <laughs> that one, <laughs> the one gay artist. <laughs> It was ostracized. You know, the, the homosexual fellow. <laughs> <laughs> it's so unlike my dad. What's the name of that artist? Uh, <laughs> the, the gay, the gay one. <laughs> <laughs> Before we go, I just have to ask you, you were born in Hammersmith according to Wikipedia and I know you think you were born in Shepherd's Bush. Goldhawk Road, what's that? Well, it's on the border. What is the tallest building in Hammersmith? <laughs> oh, mate. Uh, I've no idea. I mean, th there's just a flyover in the Palais there, as far <laughs> as I know. Well, the Wikipedia, or maybe my Google search, went for the Empress State Building in Earl's Court, which I think is stretching Hammersmith a bit. That's 117 metres high. Is this one of your emergency questions? Yeah, what well, sort of? I'm just asking guests if they know the tallest building. What's the tallest building in Norwich? Oh, uh, the Cathedral? Well, yeah, but I would think it probably is. <laughs> but the Google... <laughs> Google said Norwich City Hall. <laughs> Sixty Imagine. 63 <laughs> <laughs> And there was me thinking it was the cathedral. Well, I think the cathedral in must fact, be... In fact, it wasn't. It was Norwich City Hall. And that's what this says. Did it say by how much it's taller? <laughs> I rich? don't know. Well, I didn't look up the cathedral. We can look it up um, maybe backstage. <laughs> <laughs> that could maybe be uh, what we do. Anyway, look, I think uh, we should... It's been lovely talking to you. We may maybe have to get you back another time. I don't know. We'll have to see uh, what the listeners think after yeah, this performance. Okay. I've only been on your podcast. You know what I was going to do? I was Because I, I uh, sometimes over-prepare. And the thing that I over-prepare... Tell me, like, you don't have to do it, right? Yeah. But would this be good? Because um, I was watching I was watching a programme uh, about 1984 on BBC4. Yes. I love those shows. And it had a little section about Free Nelson Mandela, the song. Yeah and Jerry Damas was talking about it, and I was reminded, A, what a good song it is, yeah. B, how actually effective it was, yeah. one of the few political songs that had a clear effect, yeah. a positive effect. And uh, so I was, and you know how the verse goes, uh, 21 years in captivity, yeah. are you so blind that you cannot see? Are you so deaf that you cannot hear? I was thinking, we could just carry on doing like, <laughs> are you so something that you, that you can't something? <laughs> and see how long we could go for. I go back and forth. <laughs> I, I, got, I, got the, I got like some music for it. You can cut this out, right? <laughs> yeah, you probably have to, the things I'm thinking. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's the uh, karaoke version, so it's clearable. <laughs>
21 years in captivity Are you so blind that you cannot see? Are you so deaf that you cannot hear? Are you so lame that you cannot walk? Are you so stupid you don't understand? Are you so sexually impotent you can't get an erection? <laughs> Are you so short that you cannot reach? <laughs> Are you so tall that you cannot reach down? <laughs> Are you so slow you need to... Sp this is not good, is it? <laughs> That's why... You think of you so slow you need to speed up. <laughs> yeah. That's why... That's why they restricted it to just those two... <laughs> verses. I would have been going in there every day going, Jerry, I, I got a new one! <laughs> Are you so boring that no one wants to talk to you about it? What about that? Jerry, come back. All right. I, I tried. Oh, my God. Uh, thank you very much for coming back, Adam. Uh, it's always lovely to see you. We, uh, next time I'm in Norwich, I'm going to give you a ring. Please do. I will do. Let's do it, man. Uh, let's do it. <laughs> Thanks, and gentlemen. Adam Buxton! Yeah. We're back next week. Andrew Collins! Bobby Lyons! See you next week. How'd you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>